Hi everybody, it's Axman, and today we're finally going to tackle the horrible mess that we call the forging system. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's actually quite easy once you got the hang of it. This is probably going to sound a little bit different compared to all my other videos. I've actually written a script for once, and this should help alleviate all the ums and ers that I usually did in my other videos. Now enough of all that, let's move on to the forging guide. This is going to be quite a long one, so I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. We're going to start off with the item rarity. We're going to purely do this just to help some of the newer players. <coughs> Steam! <coughs> okay, I know it's not released yet on Steam, but at least it's up there ready for them to see. So, items will have a specific colour indicating what rarity they are. You can work out that rarity from the colour of their name and the colour of their border when you look at them in the inventory. These colours are green, blue, purple and orange. These colours also correlate with their represented portals. Novice, Advanced, Elite and Master. It's only once you've reached the uber portals when shit really starts to get real. In uber portals 1 to 6 you'll have a chance to drop red, resplendent or shadow gear, although you can still expect a lot of orange gear to drop in them. Shadow gear is what you're really looking for in the uber portals, as these can be upgraded to radiant rarity, or as I should say, fucking OP godly as shit rarity. Radiant Gear, which at the moment is only obtainable through forging, will have a yellow name and a yellow border. Radiant Rarity is pretty much endgame gear that also has an added special visual effect to your weapon. This could be flames, electricity, skulls, ice clouds and several others that I can't remember off the top of my head. Now that we've hopefully got that out of the way, we can finally move on to the actual forging guide. You can forge any gear you like, but it's highly recommended you forge shadow gear as it's easier to find the stronger you get. Because of this, I'm only going to show you the forging guide from shadow gear and up. Some stats will have a pearl at the end of them. Each stat can have a maximum of two pearls and these increase the stats number significantly. Pearls can be obtained through pirate chips in the store with real cash or you can trade them from other players. You can apply the pearls to your gear using in the advanced forge. You can also apply tomes to your gear in the advanced forge. This decreases the item's level requirements, but not many people pay much attention to this. You can also change the aura of a radiant weapon with a little bit of glim, which is nice. Each item will only have around two to three stats naturally, but you can add the extra stat or two in a chaos forge with tentacles. It's some real RNG shit, so for the last two stats expect to spend a lot of tentacles to find what you're looking for. Tentacles can be obtained by killing invaders in the store with real cash, or you can buy them off other players. So what gear should I forge? To start off, find some shadow equipment that has two or three of the base stats you want. All the weapons you find will always have physical or magical damage, so you want to find something that adds, I don't know, jump or health or whatever suits you build. You can then upgrade that gear in a normal forge and with Flux and Eyes of Cthulhu. Every time you upgrade it adds a star to the item. Shadow Gear has a maximum of 5 levels, so to add a level you need to forge it 5 times, then to add another level you need to forge it another 5 times, and so on. From levels 3 to 5 though you're going to need forged souls after every 5 forges. These can be obtained by deconstructing level 3 to 5 Shadow Gear. So, deconstructing level 2 gear deconstructs into twice forged souls, then level 3 deconstructs into a thrice forged soul, and then level 4 into a quad, and then level 5 deconstructs into a penta forged soul. Seriously, I can see why this looks confusing at first, but trust me, it sinks in after a while. Now it can get pretty expensive deconstructing and upgrading all that gear just to get the souls, so it's highly recommended you mainly just trade them off other players, unless you are seriously rich. Now back to upgrading the gear. Like I said, levels 3 to 5 shadow gear are going to need the forged souls. To upgrade to shadow level 3 you're going to need 2 twice forged souls, and then to upgrade to level 4 you're going to need 2 thrice forged souls, to level 5 you're going to need 2 quad forged souls. Are you still with me? Good? Because we're going to keep going. Now that you've maxed out the shadow gear, you're like, hell yeah dog, I want to be stronger. Well, you're in luck because now you can upgrade to Radiant Gear, if you can afford it. To get from Shadow 5 to Radiant, you're going to need three Pentasols, and they're not fucking cheap, uh, three Purifying Dragon Flames, and these can be made quite easily, to be honest with you, with the Dragon Crucible. This is found in the hub, and it costs one Dragon Coin and 200 Radiant Shards to make. Once you've sold your body to get all that cash to make it this far, you're still not done yet. Now you can upgrade that Radiant shit five more times for five star Radiant Glory and become the true ruler of... You know what? This is really confusing. I can really see why this would scare a lot of people away from forging. It's okay once you've got the hang of it, but still, even then, it's like a huge clusterfuck of neurons. But anyway, that's my, in a nutshell, as possible, but not really as possible forging guide. Uh, will it get outdated soon? It probably will. But anyway, I'm done. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. I hope I've helped clear that up for some of you. And I hope to see you again next time. Outro voice for the change, yeah I don't normally do this but I kind of feel I might have to with this one because it's such a big difference compared to my other videos. Anyway, I probably made several mistakes in that video then, um, feel free to point them out. Um, I did try to correct as much as I can but it was kind of too late so I could do the voice again. But oh well, I managed to do the best I could with text. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one guys, it's completely different compared to my other ones. I've kind of tried really hard with this, it kind of, sounds kind of sad, but I actually wrote out the script and everything, because 
yeah, I haven't done anything like that since I was in college. Anyway, thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.